Dr. Dean Ornish was the first to show in a randomized controlled trial that a plant-based diet and lifestyle program could apparently reverse the progression of our number one killer, heart disease, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery. Then he showed the same plant-based program could potentially reverse the course of early-stage prostate cancer, and also elongate telomeres, suggesting an anti-aging effect as well. But when he told me he was going to see if he could reverse the progression of Alzheimer's disease, I was skeptical. Uh, surely he was biting off a little bit more than he could chew. Dementia is the most feared condition of later life. There's a common misconception that we have no control over whether or not we develop dementia, but the good news is that although Alzheimer's may be incurable, at least it is preventable. There's an emerging consensus that what's good for our hearts is also good for our heads, because clogging of the arteries inside the brain with atherosclerotic plaque is thought to play a role in the development of Alzheimer's dementia. This is what our cerebral arteries should look like— open, clean, allowing blood to flow throughout our brain. This is what atherosclerosis in our head looks like— clogged with cholesterol, closing off our arteries, clamping down on blood flow. Uh, what kind of brain arteries do you want in your head? Too much cholesterol in our blood is unanimously recognized to be a risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Those with a total cholesterol of 225 or more may have nearly 25 times the odds of ending up with amyloid plaques in their brain 10 to 15 years later. After all, what is the Alzheimer's gene, APOE? It codes for the major cholesterol carrier inside the brain. This may explain the so-called Nigerian paradox, where they have among the highest rates of the Alzheimer's gene, but some of the lowest rates of Alzheimer's disease. How is that possible? Genes load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. The paradox may be explained by their low cholesterol levels, probably due to their diets low in animal fat. So, in terms of dietary guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, we should center our diets around vegetables, legumes, beans, flippies, chickpeas, and lentils, fruits, and whole grains. In other words, the dietary pillar of lifestyle medicine whole food, plant-based nutrition. More of that's too complicated. Plants, plants, and more plants. That may help explain why vegetarians may be up to three times less likely to become demented later in life. Uh, but it's not all or nothing. Even just substituting 5% of animal protein with plant protein appears to significantly reduce the risk of dying from dementia. But prevention isn't sexy. When prevention works, nothing happens. But the same diet and lifestyle that helps prevent heart disease was proven to help reverse it. Until then, it was believed that heart disease progression could only be slowed, not stopped or reversed, similar to how Alzheimer's disease is viewed today. So what if you put people with Alzheimer's on the same plant-based program? You don't know until you put it to the test. A randomized, controlled, phase two clinical trial to see if the progression of Alzheimer's disease may be slowed, stopped, or perhaps even reversed by randomizing about 50 men and women diagnosed with early-stage Alzheimer's to either make no lifestyle changes for 20 weeks or to eat a whole food plant-based diet with supplements like vitamin B12, moderate exercise like walking a half an hour a day, stress management like relaxing with breathing exercises, and getting group support over Zoom. They measured standard tests of cognition and function before and after in each group, as well as objective experimental biomarkers of disease progression, 
On the clinical dementia rating global scale, which is used to stage the severity of dementia, the control group continued to get worse. But the diet and lifestyle group started to get better. People diagnosed with Alzheimer's getting better? The same seemed to happen when measured with the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale, though this did not reach statistical significance. And using what's called the clinical dementia rating sum of boxes scoring, both groups continued to deteriorate, but the decline was significantly less in the healthy living group. Overall, Using what's called the Clinical Global Impression of Change scoring, most of the people in the control group kept getting worse, and none showed any improvement, which is what you'd expect with Alzheimer's, whereas about 40% of those in the diet and lifestyle group appeared to be getting better within five months of eating and living healthier. Now, why did some get better and others not? Well, the more they complied with the recommendations, the greater the beneficial impact on their cognition and function. This helps to explain why studies of less intensive lifestyle interventions were not sufficient to stop disease progression, let alone actually improve cognition and function. The biggest limitation of the study is that, you know, unlike drug trials, where you can give people a disguised placebo sugar pill, when a study involves major diet and lifestyle changes, you can't rule out the placebo effect, especially for self-reported subjective, how's your memory been, type questions. But the researchers also measured objective investigational biomarkers of disease progression and saw the same trajectory, improvements in the interventional group and worsening in the control group, with the same apparent dose-response effect, meaning the more they improve their diet and lifestyle, the more dramatic the effect. Compare that to the latest Alzheimer's drugs, which may not even work at all. All you may get for your $56,000 is a 1 in 3 chance of swelling or bleeding in your brain. When the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the drug anyway, the head of the American Geriatric Society replied, my head just exploded. The bottom line is that there's only one diet that's ever been shown to help reverse our leading cause of death, heart disease, in the majority of patients, a plant-based diet. If that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, then shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? And the fact that can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, or reversing the progression of other leading killers, like high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, and now maybe even early-stage Alzheimer's disease, would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming.